This is the front of the famous Independence Hall in Philadelphia, and this is where we had gay picketing demonstrations every July 4 from 1965 through 1969. People think of the Stonewall Rebellion as uh, uh, the start of the gay civil rights movement. That's a myth. There was a movement starting back in the late 1940s and it gradually evolved and it picked up steam and we were doing this very revolutionary picketing in the 1960s before Stonewall ever happened. I heard about the gay movement by reading what was a very uh, uh, seminal book of the time, The Homosexual in America, A Subjective Approach, by Donald Webster Corey. And I was fascinated by the idea that a book on the subject could be published, a book by a homosexual. I contacted the author who lived in New York City, and he told me about the newly formed Mattachine Society. So I, I took, I had two, the usual two weeks vacation, and. For the first time in my life, I bought a plane ticket and went up in the air and went to the West Coast and landed in the offices of one of the gay organizations in Los Angeles with a rucksack on my back, and I said, well, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> and they said uh, that there was just, uh, there was a gay women's organization that had been formed just the year before up in San Francisco. So I bought another ticket, got in the air again, and went up to San Francisco and contacted the Daughters of Belitis. and they were just starting their publication called The Ladder. Mm -hmm. And for the first time, I went to one of the, I was invited to one of their meetings and for the first time in my life, I was in a room together that was not a bar with about 15 other lesbians. And it was a really, a, it was a stepping stone for me. It Did was a wonderful entree into the movement. At great personal and professional risk to its publishers and often to its readers, the latter, a lesbian publication, was born. All too often, the journal was the only link women had to others like themselves. They somehow got...
And suddenly we began to see that the problem of homosexuality, which is what we were organized around, was not our problem, but society's problem. Uh, that gay is good, in parallel with black is beautiful. That we had to not uh, uh, politely ask for a few crumbs of privilege from the table, but go out and demand rights in the courts and in other forums where we could get them. And the whole atmosphere changed, and I began to develop a very coherent, strong, positive feeling. We have actually a film clip that's really interesting. Lily Vincennes did uh, a film called The Second Largest Minority. And it's a, almost like a home movie of one of the first gay rights, public gay rights demonstrations. And you're in it. It was sponsored by a uh, group of gay organizations on the East Coast. And it was done as what we call the annual reminder day on Independence Day, July 4th, to remind the public that there is still a significant minority of Americans who do not benefit from the rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness Barbara, that are guaranteed there are. us. There I am handing out leaflets. And the drill was, you smile, and you smile, and you hand out to everyone, whether they take it or not. So there I am handing out leaflets. Well, were you scared? It was scary because there were so few of us who could take the risk of being so public. For example, um, what if my boss sees me on the six o'clock news and fires me? Or what if my picture appears on the front page of my parents' hometown newspaper and causes grief or shockwaves in the town? And uh, what if some bystander starts throwing insults at us or worse, bricks or stones? Uh, and what is the government going to do with all those photographs and tape recordings that they're taking of us? Well, the philosophy um, was to make us look normal the way everybody else looked. So did we succeeded so well that, uh, as Frank Kameny said, um, some people thought we were actors. Independence Hall is where the thing was done. Both the uh, Declaration of Independence um, and uh, the Constitution were right there. You know, coming out in a picket line in 1965 
was downright revolutionary for that time. It took gumption. It really took gumption and the conviction that we were right and the world was wrong. We were just at the start of cracking that cocoon of invisibility. You know, we were first class American citizens and we have wanted, that's a message we have wanted, we had wanted to tell everyone from the beginning. We are first class citizens. We are not marginal people. I feel that those demonstrations led directly into Stonewall in 69 and that without our demonstrations starting in 65 Stonewall would not have happened because what they did was to create the mindset for gay people who had never ever before done this to demonstrate publicly to dissent publicly to to do things out in the open and no, nobody had ever done this before. The 1969 demonstration took place just about a week after the Stonewall Rebellion in New York City. A lot of people who were fired up by the fight against the police at Stonewall came down to Philadelphia or came from other cities into Philadelphia and joined the demonstration and it was the largest we had ever had. There were about 150 people. That sounds like very little today, but for us it was a huge turnout. And the very first day 
days of GAA, we created a street theater committee. They brought a wedding cake with two grooms and two, two brides uh, separately. Oh, this is definitely the marriage bureau, uh, but it's been taken over by the Gay Activist Alliance. No, it could be quite a while. It depends on how long it takes to capitulate. We have all the records here. You know that, folks. We have all the records here. Your mother and dad want to get married. Are they gay? Oh, I'm sorry. We can't help you. No. no, I can't. I'm sorry. But if you come down and talk to some person, we'll be glad to talk to you. Give you some free wedding cake. Hey, buddy, you calling us garbage? You calling us garbage? Come back here and say that to a gay person's face. Yeah, run away. Yeah. Run away. <laughs> It was very, very clear that a primary obstacle to our getting anywhere was the allegation that homosexuality was an illness, a disturbance.
they had a panel called Psychiatry, Friend or Foe to Homosexuals. Well, it was not easy to find someone who was both openly gay and a psychiatrist in 1972. And we finally landed someone who said, yes, I'll do it, provided I can wear a wig and a mask over my face because I'm in fear of losing my job. My message is simply hang in there, folks, because those of us who are out are oiling the closet door hinges just as fast as we can. That's really That's great. That's lovely. Thank I love you. That. My partner Kay and I have talked about uh, the need for uh, gay retirement homes for older gay people. We know a time is coming. 
I guess I would call it the Lavender Light Years Retirement Home. And I will be able to rock and say, do you remember when we picketed the White House in 1965? <laughs> that we can change the world. Change begins with you.